Hello everybody. Today we're going to be making an Easter bunny butt deco mesh wreath or some may call it a bunny bottom. I didn't grab the bunny butts at my Dollar Tree in time for Easter and I missed out on them. So I decided to make this template and I decided to make my own wreath or my own bunny butt with some of my craft stash and some Dollar Tree items. This is a 3D print that I made but you can use something like a coffee lid anything like that or a large snack lid for like the cheese balls a lid like that would be really good but I 3d printed this and then after I made it I thought oh I could have used a you know coffee uh, can top or something <laughs> but this towel is from the automotive section and I'm going to be making a, a circle we're just gonna cut it in a nice round circle and I'm leaving room and I'm gonna hot glue the pieces on and just hot glue it all around and I have my finger protectors on because I knew this would be a little painful if I got burned so and what I'm doing is just folding it checking it just to see if it looks even and a little bit at a time I'm putting some glue down and I'm just going to hold tight onto that until I feel that it's dry and we'll just move around till we're finished. Now I left that top piece open because I'm going to put some stuffing in and I couldn't find my pillow stuffing anywhere. So I just looked around and I found uh, I had a satin pillowcase from Dollar Tree that I had finished using and I had some spare pieces. So I cut all those up and I made stuffing and I also need um, needed to have white stuffing in there because you'll see it if it's anything else that you put in so something white would be the best and you know even if uh even if the lid's colored you won't see anything with the the white stuff in but cotton balls or anything like that around the house is good and i've stuffed it just a little bit here just get kind of a little lump and i'm going to finish up the edge here with some hot glue and just turning it over just to look and see where we are and then these last few pieces will just seal it up and then we'll have our the first part of the bunny bottom and just that last one and give it some pressure and just hold it until it's dry and you know you can go back under any pieces that you find that may be sticking up a little bit and I probably would have went back and put a white uh, circle piece on this but I'm you know I'm just um it's for me so I'm not going to uh, seal it up but if I was to make it for someone else I'd make a little circle panel and glue that back on there and the little pattern that I made was just in Illustrator um, and I drew that out I looked at some images and you know came up with my own and um, what I'm doing here is I'm leaving a little bit of space around the feet because I don't think I made them big enough and then I didn't want to cut in between the toes because I thought that would be a little rough so I just left a space around and I you can sew them but I I'm just gonna hot glue them but you can sure take a white thread and needle and and sew it up too so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to hold on tight to this and cut it. Uh, I do need my scissors sharpened or I need a new set. So I'll work on that. <laughs> but right now I just cut myself a square and you can pin this too if you want it, if you want. But I'm cutting around and I am leaving even a little bit more space. Just trying to initially judge about what I'm going to need and it's not perfect or anything it's just cut out what I thought would give me enough of a seam allowance just just by eye really so I have my little piece here and I'm just checking to see if everything's cut through and it is so I'll get my glue gun out and just start gluing up at the end there and glue all around the edges and then definitely finger protectors here because it was starting to get a little bit warm <laughs> all right so I'm leaving a little opening at the very top of the paw and and then gluing up the initial edges here 
So a needle and thread, white thread here would be fine too, and it would probably be, give you a little bit more control. But for the sake of the video, I wanted to get um, the feet done. So I'm gonna turn this that right side out, and then just with your finger, take a little bit of, put your finger down in there a little bit, and that'll start to make it shape. And this is actually pretty forgiving too. I mean, you are able to really kind of mold it and get the shape that you need. And, and it's not, like I said, it's not perfect. Once it gets filled in, it'll look a, a little bit better, but it's, it's real easy. That cloth is the in the automotive aisle and it's i believe it's for drying your car off and it just there it's just so soft and white and and moldable really so i'm taking the pieces of that cloth because again i don't have my filler i just couldn't find it so i figured, well, you know, I'm going to have a little bit of pieces left over from this anyway, and we do want it to be white, and we do want it to be fuzzy and kind of furry-ish, so I'm just going to put, uh, load all that up in there, and, and I'm going to take my time here because I want to, I want to hot glue this shut, so I am taking some extra time to really pull that all together and tuck it in and get it to to where I want it. There was a little bit of a, a blob of glue there, so I just pulled that off. And, you know, sewing this up by needle and thread probably would have been good too. And I, it can be machine sewed too, but I didn't, I didn't get my machine out. So this is some Ofray ribbon that I had and I think I, I think the original ribbon is from Joann's, and it was white. And I used some of the uh, alcohol inks and mixed a couple colors together a while back, and I still have some of that left over. And it was the perfect color, so I'm using it for the little pads of the feet. And in the little pads of the feet there, they can be raised up too if you put something under them and just glue around those if you have a little stuffing. And then I had these little uh, pom-poms that came for actually for free when I bought the the white, uh, I'm trying to think of the name of them now. Um, I'm, I'm thinking pipe cleaners right now. Chenille stems, that's the name of them. <laughs> when I bought the white chenille stems for the deco wreath, these little cotton balls were, I mean, these little pom-poms were uh, in the package as extra. So that was a very nice bonus. And I believe that I had one pink left over, so that was lucky. But I really do like them. I think they're, they would come in handy for any other projects. But for right here with that ribbon, I thought it would give it a little bit of a different look than felt. And I just I thought it would be shiny and soft and just feminine looking, you know. So I'm just going to glue them, press them in a little bit. And I like that they shine. I think that gives it a different look. And then also, too, if you wanted to put a little bit of cotton under there to make them puff out, you could do that, too. And and the little cotton, uh, the little, sorry for calling them cotton balls, <laughs> the little uh, pink pom-poms. They are just perfect, and I just like that, that it gave that, that little three-dimensional look. And they, you know, they stand out a little bit, too, and it gives, a, gives them some color also. And I just glued the first one in the middle, and then the next two, I wanted them up a little bit to look like they go around the foot. And so with my finger protector, too, I'm just pressing those in and you give it a little bit of time to dry with with the glue gun sometimes it's hard because a little bit will get all over but you pull you can pull that off so I just went ahead and I did the second foot and molded them into shape the best I could and and I'm just placing them on uh, the bunny bottom and I I feel that that is where I want them I'm 
going to position them before I put that glue down because, you know, we don't want to glue them in place and then they're crooked and they don't look right. But using a circle, a full round circle is really helpful. I did see some that had um, oval and I just felt like I had a little bit more control over where I placed everything. So I did like using the circle. All right, and then we'll get those both glued into place, keeping our finger protectors on and getting rid of any extra little spider webs there. And, uh, you know, I'm just cleaning it up a bit because a little bit of the glue got stuck on. And then I have this uh, ponytail. I mean, ponytail. Oh my goodness. I have this pom pom <laughs> that is from, um, <laughs> it's from Dollar Tree. And my nurse approved just came up because I just feel that this craft is just such good therapy and it made me feel so good to be able to make the bunny bottom. And I got a package of those pom poms or bunny tails from Dollar Tree and there was quite a few in the pack. I mean, it was really nice. It was such a good deal. So I would probably use those for filler in the winter for some snowballs or something. They were really, really nice and just really good, thick quality too. Very, very nice score at Dollar Tree. And they seem to have quite a bit of them. Now here is my Dollar Tree uh, wire frame. Uh, when I did pick this up, it was bent. I was very careful not to bend it too much. I didn't realize how bent it was, but I sprayed it with white spray paint and it was just, I just did that. You don't really have to. And that um, deco mesh is from Michael's and it is from Christmas. And I had it wrapped around my Christmas tree and I didn't want to leave it in storage. I figured, well, I could use it to make the wreath. So I took that all out. I wound it back up. And then here's those white chenille stems. And I, I couldn't find any at the Dollar Tree. So I ordered them online and I do have quite a bit of them but they're, they came in handy and I'm cutting them in half right now just to be able to save some, you know, you're going to use it. If you use the long stem, uh, you're going to have a lot left over. So I figured I would give this a try. And this is one of the cutting mats from Dollar Tree and the rotary cutter. And it's a, a self healing mat. So it uh, comes in handy. So right now I'm taking my uh, rotary cutter and I'm going to trim that end off, trying to get it straight. And then these pieces here, I'm going to cut them all at seven inches because I'm uh, working on making a, a curly deco mesh wreath. I've done the pull through one before. I think they call it bubble. I've done a couple of those before with the Dollar Tree mesh, but this you know, I wanted to, to try this out. So right here, I'm lining it up and I'm trying to get that mesh as straight as I can, but it, it was tough, you know, to, to cut the different pieces. And I'm going to cut seven inch pieces of those. And with this particular bundle that I'm going to make, so I'm going to make a bundle of four curls. So I'm cutting another seven inch piece and I think I'm actually cutting a little bit more here. I might be going on to, to cut about eight pieces, but oh no, maybe that was four. Okay. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to take that and roll, roll it kind of like a, a taquito, but just not as tight. And then I'm rolling it up. And then as I get to the very end, I'm going to fold that little end over so that I don't have that, you know, rough edge. And I'm going to gather this up, put it in my hand here. And I have those pink clips that you get from Dollar Tree too. I had a bunch of those and I didn't, wasn't going to do good holding them. I know people do it, but it just wasn't working for me. <laughs> so I just clipped them and then I'm uh, rolling this up too. And I'm putting it in where the opening is towards, towards the clip so that they all face the same way. And that folded over area will be facing down. 
And at least that was my, my method. You know, this being my first one, just wasn't quite sure how it was going to look. So it's just uh first time for everything, right? <laughs> All right. And then as I gather that together, I'm going to pinch them in between my two fingers and I've got my uh, chenille stem cut in half already and I'm just going to tie it very snug and then just twist it and keep twisting it and then there's my first bundle and I'm going to make some more white bundles. I'm going to have about 12 white bundles when I get done. I actually did run out of of white so I had to take some pink now I'm gonna do pink and white anyway but I did have to do uh, some straight pink ones too and I, I can explain that as it as we go along here and it was just a matter of you know I didn't really know what my pattern was gonna be and how many bundles I was gonna need so with these this is the Dollar Tree deco mesh and I don't think all of their deco mesh is like that, but I found it very tough to work with. The, this, the Michaels deco mesh wasn't too bad, but I've actually heard of people taking, I think it's a, like a heat knife or a, a wood, a wood burner, and they cut their edges. They probably do it on glass or something, but they cut the edges so that they don't get the you know, mesh being torn up and everything and sticking out. But this really wasn't bad, this, but I, the Dollar Tree, I think was, was pretty tough to work with. And, and I didn't experience that in the past. So I don't know, maybe it was just this particular brand is not really tightly woven, uh, but I'm taking a white and then I'm going to alternate with this pink. And then another white and this is going to be in every other type of pattern for now until until we see further all right and I'm just going to stick that one in and then next we'll do the other white the white and pink and, and you'll see as you get towards the end there, it's just really hard to hold on to it and you get some things, little sticker outers there. <laughs> and, and I've taken a second time to roll this back up here. But, you know, once I got the hang of it, it wasn't too bad. But I just don't think that it would be something I would work with again. I just don't think it's necessary. It's probably better to make sure that you get the the better mesh and it'll make the project go a lot easier although once this you do get going with this if you put on some nice music or have a, a little coffee or latte or something or just relax and let the time go and just make a goal of making the bundles first and then it won't seem as much is if you just make a goal of putting together those bundles. So, and right here, I'm doing a little bit of trimming for those fringes that hang off. And I've got my whites and I've got my pinks made and my bundles are all set. And this is just what I was talking about too with the straight, when I ran out of white, I just did straight pinks. So here I had started a pattern and I was just doing one white and then two pink and whites and then one white. And right where that bar goes across, I'm going to use that as a reinforcement. And I didn't plan on a lot of the pink in there, but I'm glad that I did do that because I think it came out pretty. So what you can do too to make it a little bit easier is try to work from the back or exactly or from the front and then take those 
two wired pieces and stick those in like that, you know, stick them up and, and it'll kind of get like a little streamline going. And I'm doing every, I'm doing one side of the wire and then the other side of the wire so that it, it reinforces it. So I'm putting through one side of that straight wire and then the other. And uh, that's what that looks like with the pink on. And then for this one, maybe you'll be able to see a little bit better. So for this one right here, it's, it takes a little bit sometimes, but you can see how I do the, the one on one side of the wire and one on the other and using that so that none of the others will slide. And then I'm taking that white chenille stem and you know tucking that in. So that's the first section right there. And that's the pattern that I'm going to continue with all the way through. And I'm spacing this out a little bit here just to try to get a, a look. So as I continue, I'll have my pattern all laid out. So, you know, I think I like the way that looks. And you do have a little bit of, sometimes they jumble up a little bit on you. So you just have to push them over. So now on here, the next part of my pattern after the pink is going to be the white. And that's just going to go on those two center wires there. Nothing on the, the bottom wire, nothing on the top wire, just that those two center pieces, those two center wires. And that's what I used the whole way through was the two center wires. Okay, and the next is uh, in the pattern is pink and white. And I'm starting to get a pattern here and starting to get a routine where I'm coming in from the front of the wreath to the back and then start to do my twisting here of my chenille stems. And then what I'll do is those will get tucked in. And that way it doesn't scratch your door or anything. If you put it on the door or wall, it won't scratch it. So then our next up here is going to be a white bundle. And just moving that over a little bit to try to get some room to work. And it can always be moved back out. And at the very end, you're, you're going to, you know, fluff it out anyway. So I just check periodically as I'm going through just to see what we have and what it looks like. And just keeping an eye on it. But mainly I'm going to be working, looking at the back and feeding these chenille stems through the front. And now the next up too is another one of the white and pink. And then we'll do the same thing. Just take those, wrap it around those two middle wires. And they are a little bit small, but they would have just been wasted. There would have been so much extra if I didn't cut them. But I just had to learn how to work with them and learn how to tie them. And now here we're at this crossbar. So we want to do our weaving pattern here where we go in one part of that wire and then the other part of the wire so that we have some stability there and we're not going to go anywhere. So that's our second section and second part of our pattern and then you know as we were doing we'd turn it over and take a look at it and later on i i will have to go through because you you see some chenille stems and everything but you know we'll they can be tucked in and the and everything will be reorganized <laughs> as i'm doing starting to do now anyway but i just like to take a look at it as I'm working on it and just see where I am. But I'm gonna finish up the rest. And here's what it looks like when we finish all the pattern. And I'm just going through now and I'm taking those curls and kind of sticking them forward. And any spaces that are look like they're left, I'm just trying to fill them up. And then here's what the back looks like. I, I really like that white, um, the white chenille stems. And then I just tried to line everything up so we had a neat pattern on the back. And, and you know, tuck them in so that they don't scratch the wall. And then here's our bunny bottom. And this is a little bit out of screen here. I'm trying to get back in for you. 
and then he'll just uh, the bunny bottom will just go right in the middle and I found these ears bunny ears at Dollar Tree and they were really good to work with I just had to be a little bit careful with them because they are delicate so I would suggest to do the bunny ears second on the wreath but I did them I did the bunny ears first but what I'm doing here is I'm just taking one full long chenille stem and I'm going to use these glue these on so that I can attach my bunny bottom to the wreath so if by chance I wanted to make the wreath into just maybe a spring wreath instead of an Easter wreath I would be able to still have the flexibility to take that piece out and you know remove the ears and then that way I could maybe um, just put some spring flowers or other ribbons in it and just you know go from there but I really wanted an Easter wreath for my door I usually don't get that far I do all the decorating outside but then I never get to my wreath it's always just a spring a basic spring wreath so this year I wanted this and then when I went in and they didn't have the bunnies I was like oh no but I thought to myself well, I'm gonna figure out a way to <laughs> make a bunny bottom <laughs> so I'm just finishing up on on some glue here and then I use my pencil and everything it just works better and it keeps that glue really thick and gloppy and then here I'm putting in the ears and I would have done that last for sure I am out of the uh, the camera eye here so I apologize for that but I basically took the ears and I didn't even cut them or anything I just took a chenille stem and I fastened them in and I used one of those crossbars to kind of keep it stable and I just I love the way they look I think they're so cute and they're furry and um, don't do that um, what I'm doing because I did snap it and it actually even ended up tearing off later the one of the ears but I just glued it back in but still if you're really gentle and you do that last that would really help and then here I'm taking those little chenille stems and just finding a spot in the wreath and taking a look and poking those through on the other side it was very very easy to do I usually try to string everything up and glue string on and it never looks straight and it always seems that it's blowing in the wind outside so I thought well, I would try this and then this way I would have to be able to kind of maneuver it a little bit if it was crooked and then now I do want it up a little bit so I'm able to maneuver that around with those you know, stems and I, I just really highly recommend doing this uh, doing it like this because you're you have the flexibility of taking it off or moving it around if it just doesn't look straight and I'm just twisting up the last of that and what I'm doing is I'm just tucking that around so that it's not sticking out and it looks it looks nice that way and then there is the bunny bottom I just love the way that turned out and the way that it looks on the wreath and I had I know you can't see everything out of camera up here but I had made a bow and I really wasn't crazy about this bow I think it was just the yellow and I end up later not uh, using all the pieces I just used the little printed part and it was okay I think the yellow was just totally throwing it off it just wasn't working and but it I think it looks a lot nicer but we'll see how it goes and and here is our finished bunny bottom wreath and I'm just thrilled of the way that it turned out and that is how you make a deco mesh Easter bunny butt wreath. We hope you love it as much as we loved making it. And you'll see we changed the bow. I took everything else off and I just thought the printed ribbon looked perfect and it gives it some color. And if you make one of these wreaths 
please tag us on Instagram at Tranquil Mentor. We just love to see your designs. And thank you so, so much for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.